A cross-party group of MPs says the UK's exit from the European Union has so far only led to increased costs, paperwork and border problems for businesses. A report from Parliament's spending watchdog, the Public Accounts Committee, found costs for businesses had risen and trade had fallen as a result of leaving the EU. The report by the committee also warned there could be further disruption to cross-border trade this year when new import controls come in. The MPs say more must be done to improve border arrangements for businesses. They say that Brexit has led to increased costs for exporters, more paperwork for businesses and more border delays. The government says it's continuing to offer help to UK businesses to trade effectively. Here's our global trade correspondent, Chris Morris. The focus on Britain's borders continues. This report says trade volumes have fallen partly because of the impact of COVID. But the exit from the EU has clearly had an impact and new border arrangements have added costs to business. Smaller firms with fewer resources have been hit the hardest. Between the delays at the border, the extra costs and all the extra paperwork, a lot of businesses are saying that it's been a real struggle for them. So we've said to the government repeatedly before Brexit and again in this report, you need to step up and support the smaller businesses. They've concentrated on the volume businesses, the bigger ones that are doing the most trade with Europe. But that's no consolation for those many people whose livelihoods and sometimes jobs of other people depend on their being able to do this trade with Europe. The committee notes that a Brexit support fund worth £20 million was initially created for small businesses. But only £6.7 million was paid out because it was so hard to access the money. More, the report says, needs to be done. Outside Dover, long queues of lorries have become the norm. But the committee says it could get worse. It says there's potential for further disruption as more people start travelling again and passenger volumes at key ports like Dover increase. There's also concern about extra delays later this year when the EU introduces new passport controls and the UK starts checking the import of food products. The MPs want more transparency from government about the problems businesses are facing. The government says it plans to create the most effective border in the world by 2025. The committee says that's a noteworthy ambition but optimistic, given where things stand today. Chris Morris, BBC News. And joining us now from Devon is Mary Quick, a farmer and artisan cheesemaker. Uh, Mary, good to have you with us today. Tell us a little bit more about your business, first of all. Uh, well, we, as you say, we, we've got the cows, we milk the cows, we make the cheese, make it into beautiful cloth-bound, mainly cheddar. And before Brexit, we sold 40% of it overseas. We exported 40% of it. And now, post-Brexit? Uh, 23, just under 23%. OK, and that's so... Not, obviously, that's partly COVID, uh, but Brexit has played a really huge part in that. So looking specifically, Mary, at the points that the Public Accounts is, uh, Committee is making in this report, they're talking about increased costs for exporters, more paperwork for businesses and more border delays. Has your business been affected by all of those? If you wanted to describe that, described it perfectly. I thought, at last, somebody's representing what it is we think. Um, the, the cost, I mean, every, every uh, shipment now needs a, a VET certificate. The VET costs money. Our, our shipments tend to be quite small, you know, less than a pallet. And so that's quite a cost. There are um, the, the paperwork takes a lot of time. The person who's doing the paperwork has got 15 other things to do. You know, we're a little business. Um, and then with the delays, uh, we, we have no idea when we send cheese off whether it will actually arrive there on time. And there's different rules. I mean, great to have that we have the most fantastic uh, port system. But actually, for as long as we keep winding the French up and having winding the French up as a political plus, the, the port authorities in France are... They're random, different rules apply at different ports at different times. So until um, it's our government gets to grip with competence and attention to detail and not grandstanding and, and winding the French up, we are absolutely, you know, well, I can't see an end to this, the problems. We're on the verge of saying, actually, it's not worth us 
exporting direct to Europe. We'll have to do it through someone else. And our customers... What, what sort, also, you're, you're a 14th generation business, I understand. A 14th generation. Yes. That's a long time. That's so a long time. So you're on the verge of saying, 14 generations into this business, that it may not be worth your while exporting directly, at least, into Europe. That's correct. It's just, you know, that's the discussion we're having. We're just not not big enough and also our customers are saying to us that they're you know they're getting charged random taxes that they can't work it out their paperwork may not be up to it why should their paperwork have to be up to it when it's it's the british who are putting them through that by doing brexit so well, we're losing, we saw we're yesterday we saw yesterday that the government appointed a minister for brexit opportunity can you also see opportunities, despite the issues that you're facing right now, can you also see opportunities ahead, if not uh, in the immediate future? Well, I know that customers in Europe want our cheese. Crystal clear. Customers around the world want our cheese. But what we need to see from government is that competence and attention to detail and no longer about landing Brexit. It's no longer about making Brexit happen. It's now about making it work. And that, that's what we need to see. Well, what does that um, mean no for you? Idea. What does that look like for you, Mary? Because the government is saying we're continuing to ensure that businesses get the support they need to trade effectively with Europe. It doesn't sound as though you feel that is the case. So what are you looking for from government? Well, government is now great. They're starting to take an interest. But in terms of the really granular uh, assistance that we need on making stuff happen, on... on uh, um, you know, dealing with port difficulties. We have had assistance from AHDB, which is a, a, a farmer levy body. We have had assistance from trade associations. But in terms of that granular help, we ha ha really haven't had that from government. So you said pre-Brexit, 40% of your exports were going to Europe. Since then, 23%. So that's 17% of what you produce. Um, has that gone elsewhere or is that effectively a loss for you? Uh, uh, those were our total exports, not all of which went to Europe. Um, well, there has been, if you like, the Brexit dividend perhaps that we've had or uh, is that we think that people in this country are getting a bit more nationalistic. They're, they're keener on buying um, cheese from, from, from Britain. So we have ha have had a bit of an uplift in the UK. We've also had a huge uplift in online sales. Uh, to do with COVID because people are reaching out and wanting to 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 get the cheese that they used to get in food service and deli counters. So that's been an amazing, that has been an upgrade. So it's not all doom and gloom, but that export, uh, the sales we made to export, those, uh, you know, we've yet to recover. They could recover, I'm sure, but it takes, you know, it will take the government behaving like grown-ups. Uh, Mary Quick, uh, thank you very much for talking to us today, uh, telling us your story. Mary Quick, farmer and artisan cheesemaker there in Devon.